Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Ah, fall is in the air. The days are cool and crisp. The leaves are changing. The wind smells of cinnamon and the world is full of fall colors. Now, I'm from Florida, so this is just what I imagine fall to be like. Now, even though I don't get the fall colors here in Florida, I have other ways of knowing it's fall. For example, I know it's fall because pumpkin spice is back. Pumpkin spice is like my harvest moon. It's great because now it's not only a flavor of coffee, but it's also a scent used in body lotion, donuts, air fresheners, frosted mini wheats, and just about everything. I even saw pumpkin spice poo-pourri spray the other day. Way to ruin it, right? So apparently it's fall according to pumpkin spice, and I thought I'd make a fall mandala box for my usual Thanksgiving day decor. And this means using all the fall colors. Now before we get started with the tutorial, I would love it if you would play along with me and do a quick little poll. So in the comments below, I'd love it if you could type in your least favorite color to paint with. Just the very first color that comes into your mind. Go ahead and pause the video, type it into the comments, and then later in the video, I'll share with you some studies on this and we'll see where your choice falls in with the results. It was super cool, I'm so excited. So, can't wait to see what you guys type. So for this project, I decided to use Arteza Heavy Body Acrylic Paints in these colors. And these are heavy body acrylics, so I need to mix pouring medium with them, but I really like them because they have interesting colors and they're very shiny. Then I'm going to use some golden, white, and gold. And then to mix my heavy body acrylics, I'm going to use Liquitex pouring medium. So this is the steps involved in getting this heavy body acrylic into a soft body acrylic. And like I said, you can use whatever paints you'd like. I just happen to like these for this project. Basically, you just need fall colors. So I used one of these carved wooden mahogany boxes that I sell at the Dotting Center. They're amazing. And then, poof, I painted the bottom and the inside with walnut um, stain and then the top with a dark red paint. And everything is listed down below. Now I measured out the center for this one and then I'm using my divider stencil just to give me guidelines to make sure that I stay on track for the whole project because even now, years later after I've been painting these, my dots go veer off into Nowheresville. And I have tried to paint these without the divider stencils and have been sorely disappointed at my ability to stay on track without them. So. This is just mandala insurance for me. And now in order to make sure that my dots don't uh, grab onto that chalk line and do weird stuff, I just kind of wiped it off. You wipe off the excess so it doesn't give you any surprises down the line. Now using that red paint, I'm just going to place the dot on each one of those divider lines surrounding the center dot. And now using orange, I'm going to go in and put a dot in between those two chalk lines all the way around. Now one thing you'll notice with this Arteza paint, it, you can really load a lot of paint on the end of your tool. And that gives you uh, plumpier dots than if you had just used uh, liquid acrylic paint. And it also, um, this paint also maintains its shine. It's super ultra shiny paint. 
and I really like that because this has a, um, a matte base and these dots are going to be shiny. They look like Skittles when they dry. Now we're coming in with green and I'm using the same size tool as I did for the yellow. And you can see my dots are still veering off but at least now I know which direction I need my next row to go so that I can get things back on track. Now we're doing a red dot in between the green right on top of that chalk line. So I have learned over the years that um, I can't work without a divider stencil. And this is, this pains me a little bit because I would love to be able to just have perfect spacing and just know where the next dot is going to be placed. But in my experience, what happens is uh, the dots tend to veer off millimeter by millimeter in one direction or another. And what happens is towards the end of the work, like farther out from the center that you get, if there is a spacing problem, it just gets more exaggerated towards the end. So I was finding that while everything looked great in the center, where all the dots are really close together, as the work progressed, the dots just were all kinds of spaced weird towards the end. So like on this project, the end of the mandala would be the bottom of the top of that lid. And it's really good to know that all of your dots as they extend out towards the bottom when they no longer have the center dot to, um, to gauge your, your uh, spacing. It's good to know that all of those are going to be spaced correctly. So that's why I use them. They save me over and over and over again. And if you're going to spend time on your work, you might as well have something to help with symmetry because, you know, that's an easy fix. So these are like mandala insurance for me. Okay, so now we're going to drop some uh, teardrop shapes in yellow, extending down from those orange dots. And looking at this yellow, it's very transparent, but I just wanted to um, use it. I wanted to see what it would look like dry. And you can see along the edges, the color from the base coat is creeping in, but it didn't really bother me. I wanted a really brilliant yellow and I wanted it to match the uh, Arteza shine, so um, I just stuck with it. Okay, so we're eight minutes in. I want to share something with you guys. So this project contains one, two, three, this, th four of my least favorite colors. I know. Shock, right? Orange being, oh, orange and brown. Those are my number one and number two least favorite colors. And I just, uh, you know, it didn't feel good using them, but you know what? It's fall. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go with it using fall colors and I'm going to work through this. This is going to be like a uh, some kind of exposure therapy. I'm just going to dive right in and use all the colors that I do not enjoy. And as I was going through it, I'm thinking, am I the only one that hates orange and brown and sometimes yellow and red ah, and sometimes olive green? You know, am I the only one? And so I did my own little informal test and I asked on Instagram, what's your favorite color to paint with and what's your least favorite color to paint with? And I did this on Facebook as well. 
and I was shocked. Yellow got so much hate. It was across the board on Facebook. Yellow was hated the very most. Yellow, then orange, then brown, and even red sometimes. It was all the fall colors, people. Sorry, I just really like that sound effect, so. But one thing was for sure, and that was that everyone liked blue. It seemed like everyone was, uh, blue was their favorite color. So with my informal poll that I did on Facebook and Instagram, I was curious if this lined up with other studies, like real studies that scientists have done with like actual huge populations of people to see if this is a thing like across the board that is happening with people and their, you know, with their color preference. So, and what I found was, yes, indeed, this is a thing. So across the board, men and women prefer blue as the, that blue, they list blue as their favorite color almost all the time, at least 40% for men and 30% for women. For men, the next color is green. And for women, their next favorite color tends to be purple. But if you look at the colors that people list at the very end of their favorite colors being their least favorite colors of all, it is the fall colors, people. It is red, orange, yellow, brown. Always at the bottom, yellow being the very most hated color of all of them. So there it is. Science says it's true. Now, I imagine that this color preference changes over time. It probably changed. It's different between cultures, sexes, ages, um, you know, all kinds of different variables need to be, uh, you know, added into these studies, I'm sure, you know. Uh, th I'm not trying to be controversial here. I'm just trying to tell you what Google says. And, um, you know, I can't disagree. If I look at my work, I, uh, I do not use these colors very often. But I have to say that this project opened my eyes because um, during fall, when it's the season, when it's time to pull these colors out, I'm going to have something to display. And it's going to make me happy. It's going to make me feel like the season. And um, I ended up liking this project in the end because it exposed me to colors that I wouldn't normally use. So how did your choice for least favorite color line up with the studies that I just mentioned. Are you guys, are you in line with that? Or are there some of you who love yellow and orange and red? Some of you out there, you rebels. And if you do love yellow, please let's, let's say some good things about yellow because man, yellow was definitely getting some haters out there. Tell us why we need to like yellow and orange. Oh, orange, why? Why? Okay, so now everything is dry. So I'm going to take my 1 8 inch uh, pointed silicone tool and come in with that gold to make little micro dots on the inside of that red row and then two dots in between the next row of orange. Now if you're doing this project you might have your dots a little closer together or a little larger than mine are so your spacing might be off what it shows here but what I do at the end is I just add tiny dots wherever there's a space and it just adds a little bit more of a delicate look. 
Now for that row of yellow dots, I'm going to use white and do two little white dots in between each of those yellow dots. Okay, so it's time for top dots. So what I'm gonna do is just add white or yellow. Actually, I'm gonna add white to the yellow and then I'm gonna add yellow to the orange and red to brighten those up. I think I also, yeah, I use yellow to brighten up that green as well. Make it a super bright green because I want the dots to become lighter as they, um, as they go up. So yellow is most hated. It's just, thought for sure it would be orange, but no, yellow. So I placed that green dot and realized, meh, yeah, that's not light enough. So I just scraped it off with my silicone tool and mixed a little bit more yellow to brighten up that green and make it really, really bright. Yeah, that looks much better to me. Now, another cool thing about this Arteza paint is because it's so shiny, if you have any issues with top dots, uh, they just wipe off really beautifully. It forms a skin over the top of the dot that's like this protective layer that makes all of your top dots wash off so easily. Um, and that's just a nice little side benefit. So the alternative to that is if you use matte paint, it doesn't have a uh, shiny protective layer and it actually ha it grips onto the top dot paint and makes it hard to remove. So um, just something to think about. Not a bit, see how easy? You just, that orange wasn't bright enough, so just wipe it off, just like that. And then I added some yellow to, um, to that orange to brighten it up. And yep, oh, orange. Ooh. You know, one day, this reminds me of the time I went to Hobby Lobby. They had this sale on Liquitex paint and I was late, I didn't make it in time. I can only imagine the rush of people that um, stormed the place when Liquitex acrylics were on like 50% off sale. I got there late, of course, and the only color that was available, you guessed it, orange. It's not nice. Not cool, all right? Okay, so here we are adding lighter yellow uh, drop shapes on top of those yellow drops just to add a little highlight and now I'm going in with that yellow and going right on top of each of those red dots
I really hope that you guys participated in this little poll and you listed your least favorite paint colors down in the comments. I am so curious to see how many other people feel the same way I do about fall colors. It's just, um, oh, is it cold in here? That needs to be uh, fixed. So I added a little pouring medium and that fixed it. So now we'll just add red dots all on top of those brown ones all the way around. And now using our stylus tool, we're just going to add that bright green right on top of all those big green dots all the way around. Okay, so now we're going to add some yellow. Now let's talk about yellow for a second. Yellow came up as the most hated color everywhere. Even in my low-tech, low-fi Facebook poll, yellow was just consistently listed as least favorite color of all. So what is it about yellow? So I thought, you know, yellow is this happy, sunshiny color. It's energetic, it's really bright, but it can also symbolize sickness and um, caution. What do you guys think it is about yellow? Why is it such a hated color? And why don't people hate orange more? Ugh, orange. So I see a space around that center dot and I, I feel like I could further extend those micro dots into the center and just make it a little more ornate in that center space. And this is the, just the final finishing touches on the box. And right in the center, I use my gold paint right on top of that bronze. I think that looks cool. So now I'm using that brown on the bottom to pull together the walnut stain. Um, I think it makes more sense to use the brown on the bottom. I like how the colors darken as it goes down towards the bottom of the lid of the box and um, yeah it feels weird painting with brown I'm not gonna lie but um, yeah so here we are at the end of this project all that's left is to let it dry and wash off the chalk lines with water now I learned a lot from this project and in the end, even though I didn't like the paint colors I used, the end result was exactly what I was going for and it's going to make my cornucopia look sweet this year. Ooh. Ah. I hope you all liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you need any dotting supplies, come and visit me at the Dotting Center on Etsy. There you can find all the tools and projects you will need to dot your way through the holidays, like I will be. Thanks again for watching, guys. Until next time. <laughs>